ladies and gentlemen. He is on the Premier Stars, and he's up and coming and rising. You can catch him every Wednesday on the OWN Network on the hit TV show, Queen Sugar. Yes. And ladies and gentlemen, I present to you, Mr. Timon, Kyle, Durrett. What's going on with you, sir? Yes. What's going on, y'all? How y'all doing? We're doing all right, sir. Glad to have you on tonight. Thank you. Thank you. So, look here. Okay, we got the list of questions that we're going to get to. First off, me and you, we're going to ride up on Remy because Charlie tripping. And I told her, she, I, be, I tweet her, hey, you just got my man. He, he, he said he was sorry. What happened right. to forgiveness? No, sir. No, <laughs> sir. No. You know, I'm a huge fan, but no. See? He needs to move on. He, he did Charlie wrong. He did not do Charlie yes, wrong. Yes, he did do Charlie what wrong. What happens on the road stays on the road. He said he was sorry. It didn't stay on the road because he brought it home. That's because Why somebody. Why you bring it home? That's because somebody <laughs> invaded his privacy. And he should have filed yeah. charges. That's what he should have exactly. done. Yeah. No. So, <laughs> what you said. What you said. Yeah. So let's get this started. So once again, you have been in some pretty notable work. Like I said, single ladies like Mike, girlfriends, barbershop, yeah. the next cut. And but you started playing basketball at uh what is it, Alcorn? Alcorn. Alcorn. Yeah. And Alcorn we did realize the fact that you are blue fi to your heart. Shout out to Phi Beta Sigma. Oh yeah, my man. Yes. <laughs> so how did that transition from basketball to acting come about? Um, I was actually uh, acting before I was playing basketball. My first job was actually um, in 1993, and I didn't start playing ball in college until 1995. Okay. Um, so you know, I was already doing that, doing like runway stuff in Chicago, and um, you know, like local things like that. Um, but that was all after, you know, I booked my first job in 93. And, uh, you know, yeah, I mean, I was even even when I was playing basketball and when I was in college, you know, I was getting called to do ice to body double for Scottie Pippen. I would go and body double for him. Uh, oh, wow. For, for like four days and drive back, you know, I uh, would go up to Milwaukee and do some stuff for East Bay. Or there'd be a, a big runway show local to Chicago, but kind of like hood famous, so you want to be a part of that. So right. I do that 12 hour drive from all corner to Chicago, man, like it was around the corner. Because that's just what I love to do, you know. So in addition to acting, mm -hmm. I saw that you have published a self help book and also you got a sci fi book ton, uh, coming out. What about what's going on with those things? Um, the one, uh, the self help book is called Who the Hell Do I Think I Am? It's a first person assessment of oneself. Uh, the way I wrote it is in first person. So when you read it, it's as though you're talking to yourself. Okay. And one of the uh, major components of the book that I like to stress when I tell people about, people about it is that you have to be brutally honest with yourself because there's at least one person uh, that you can't lie to, mm -hmm. and that's yourself. So. Um, you know, the book came about by just some self-reflection that I had one Sunday morning. Um, and it just culminated into that, to that piece. And then my sci-fi novel, um, I'm working on that. It's very detailed. It's uh, got a lot of history, a lot of geographic fact, but there's a lot of fiction in it. And um, I'm a very detailed writer sometimes to a fault, but I, you know, I want to make sure there are no loopholes. But the story is pretty, it's pretty crazy. You know, I let a very few people read some of the excerpts. And they're like, I want to see more. I'm like, not until it's done. So. Um, you know, y'all talking to a big time nerd right now. So. Ain't nothing wrong with that. <laughs> Putting that, that nerdism of myself into other work. You know. So, well, okay. Then I'm going to ask you a question. Mm -hmm. Star Trek or Star Wars? <laughs> Let's see. Which one? Star Wars. Really? Uh, yeah, man. I'm, it, man how look, you going to diss James T? Nah, James, James T. Kirk and Mr. Spock and all those cats are cool, but man, let's... let's Darth Vader. <laughs> <laughs> he was the coldest cat in the galaxy, man. You know, I gotta give it to him. He was tainted, but like, you know, when someone asked me what's one of my favorite uh, villains, and I'm like, Darth Vader. He was, you know, he was a cold blooded dude, man. He was. I love, that. I love that, you know, that he was just who he was. So, yeah, I gotta go Star Wars, man. Sorry. <laughs> right on. Golly. So, this sci fi book, well, first mm -hmm. off, this, where can people go get this self help book now? Um, it's on Amazon. Okay. It's, um, you just type in go to books or just type it in um, who, the hell, who the hell do I think I am and it'll just pop up, you know, and you can order there. And then the sci-fi book, will it be out this year, next year? I'm not sure because I was working on it and then I booked Queen Sugar. And, <laughs> All right. A lot of, you know, that, you know, it's, a lot of this is new to me. I mean, I've been acting for a while, but, you know, when you're working with an Oprah Winfrey and an Ava DuVernay and right. like, the people who are just, 
just beast mode, man. You know, you step your game up and you find yourself allotting your time toward other things to make sure that you don't fall off the ball uh, or off track, even when you're not filming. You know, absolutely. You, you want to maintain that. You know, it's a, uh, it's a, uh, you know, it's it's just. I got to get back to it. I want to get back to it. And I think I'll be able to do it over a lot of writing over the holiday season because you when know, things die down, I don't do a lot of traveling. Right. Myself just to you know get things going for the next year. Um, so I, I think I'll you know knock out some chapters you know, soon. But I can't say when because you know, like I say, you know, with, with Queen Sugar in play, it kind of takes up a lot of my time. And rightly so, sir. Listen, we were just discussing this before you got on the air. The way Queen Sugar is written. The mm. stories inside of the story and the emotion that's carried with those stories. Like, you do a hell of a job playing yes. Davis West. Yes. I mean, the last show when we watched, when you went back and said, hey, you know, basically saying, I still love you. This chick ain't for, she just, she not real. And she looked at you and said, mm -hmm. you know, well, Remy is. I, first off, I want to change the channel. But I was like, man, this cat is really... I mean, the way it's just, uh, and the music and everything all wrapped up in one is just really just perfect. I think it's a perfect show. Yeah, yeah thank you, man. I, I'm a fan of the show, too. When I, uh, Ava screened uh, the first episode of the first season for us when we were in New Orleans. We were still filming, but she wanted us to just see how they were piecing it together. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, they, the cast will tell you, when when the episode finished and the lights came out, I was the only one that had a dry eye in place. Wow. I, and I and I told my agent I warned her and my uh, head agent because they came with me to the premiere, as well as uh, two of my publicists. And I told them I said there are some scenes in here that are going to really really pull at your emotions. And I'm telling you that theater man, it everybody in there was in tears. And I right. said it's, it's because we got some from top to bottom, and there's no bottom really. Um, but you know, just to let you know where the hierarchy is in the industry, everybody on the on the on the show is is very passionate and, mm -hmm. and proud of what they do and they take pride in how they conduct themselves, how they do their work. It is amazing. And I think I've been spoiled to a degree because this raises the bar way high, not just as far as, you know, the caliber of acting and what you see on the screen, but everything that you are, you guys don't get to see right. is incredible. Like the love and the dedication and the family feel and the, you know, the protection that we all have with one another on and off camera, you know, professionally and personally, it is literally a family, you know, and I think that I know for sure that that part carries over to what everybody sees on the screen. And it's I totally it's, agree. It's incredible. How does Davis West identify with you personally? Was it hard to get built up for this character? Or did it relate to you in some type of way? Um, you know, being an athlete, not on a professional level, but in college, you know, at that age, you know, there's a, there come uh, certain challenges with navigating through expectations and temptations, you know, in that little gray area in between things right. you can get away with as an athlete, um, as opposed to not as, you know, as a regular academic student. Um, so to have a little bit more of an eye on you, getting a lot of attention and adoration and sometimes getting more of what you want than you should get, um, you know, kind of that kind of stuff kind of goes to your head, especially at an early age. But um, as far as Davis being a grown man and me being grown, there have been times when I was vilified for something that I had done. Um, maybe it was a mistake or maybe I didn't do it or maybe I did something I didn't mean it that way or said something. And, you know, with Davis West, with his personality, he doesn't see that he did something as wrong as he's being uh, told that he has. You right, know, he right. Got, he said in episode five when he was talking to Micah, on the basketball court, you know, as long as he was putting that ball up in that basket, everything was good. Whatever he wanted, when he wanted it, and he mm -hmm. got used to that. So, um, I think that that level of maturity that Davis has now kind of matches the level of maturity that I had when I was 19, 20 years old. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, being able to grow through that, that's how I can relate to Davis. Like that younger me can relate to that dude who he is right now. That was going to be one of my questions, the growth, the growth from your character from season one to season two, because he has grown a lot. He's uh, a lot more, what's the word I'm looking for? Not apologetic, but he's a lot more. Um, he's me. regretful. He, he has not, some sympathy. Well, it's not so sympathy. You could just tell, I guess maturity is, for okay. lack of a better word. Well, yeah, it's a, he's going through a maturation period that's a little uncomfortable. 
Um, it's like a baby when it starts teething. You need your teeth, but it hurt when you get it. You right. know what I'm saying? Right. right. Um, so uh, I think that this is, you know, that old saying, be humble or be humbled. He's far more humble, and um, I think he's more learned now. Like, this is what you get, brother, when you do stuff like that. It doesn't just come with your wife finding out her being mad at you. There's a there's a ripple effect. Like, when you throw a stone way off, you can be in the water, but if you throw that stone way off, you still sit in that body of water. Those ripples, no matter how small, are going to still come back and affect you. Right. right. Davis is seeing that part now, so he's being forced forced to um, attain a level of understanding that he was not, before this happened, wasn't equipped to handle, but now he has to. Right. So, and yeah. the fact that he has to, it is, it, is a, it is a maturation period that's gonna happen whether he likes it or not. Right, because he has no support system now, I got you. Right. So, is that the message you think that's of his, uh, that's of your character, the maturity level from then to now? I think that, well, that's one of the messages. One one message is, you know, every action has a reaction. Right. And sometimes that you even, even you, even when you can control the action, sometimes you can't control the reaction or the repercussions uh, thereof. Um, I think the other message with Davis West is, um, you know, putting out to people, I get a lot of the tweets and stuff, you know, they put my name with it so I get to see what they're saying. Oh, yeah. <laughs> realize that the grass on the other side ain't greener it's actually astral turf you know <laughs> stuff like that you know it's like you left something real for something that looked good but it wasn't you know wasn't what you, you need to do and sometimes you know we the hardest lesson the best lessons that we learn or the ones that stick the most are the ones that we learn the hardest so uh oh go ahead sir i'm sorry you know, i was going to say davis is you know he's not not just the maturation period but he's he's learning he's, he's like okay I, I get it now, mm -hmm. you know, and that's not something that he's had to do. He's had Charlie doing a lot of his thinking for his money. He had to right. go out and play ball and be a dad and just be this cool, right? great dude. You know, he had a great team around him. And when that team broke down, mm -hmm. you know, he was kind of like the Michael Jordan without the Pippen and the Rock. You know, it just, man, I'm great, but man, I'd be great if I had my team with him. So he's starting to, you know, get to that point where he needs to, uh, you know, recognize it's a new him. So the future of david of uh davis west what do you think without giving anything away from you know what, whatever film and whatever the situation is can you give us a glimpse of what his future is his future as a father his future as a potential uh getting him maybe get into another pot uh, potential relationship maybe or uh, even with his new team i think that all of that can come into play um Y'all give me one second. I'm going to set this fan up because it's hot up in here. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. I was wondering, he did look like he was kind of shiny. <laughs> like, uh, he's in there sweating to the oldies. I thought, man, maybe he just finished working out. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, his brother, you know, he just got off the treadmill. No, he just, well, actually, he, he did. He is a former trainer. He is a former oh. trainer. No, no, no. Oh. Yeah. I do 12 ounce curls. <laughs> that's the extent of my workout. 12 ounce curls, that's how you do? Yeah, I'm pretty good uh. at it. Oh, well, KD, you just sitting there smiling and everything. Are you? I'm, I'm letting yeah, you get through your questions. Give me I, have, I have questions. Uh, yeah. Oh, see, he wiped sweat off. You see that? <laughs> <laughs> see, it got kind of bad when I can feel it trickling down. I'm like, wait a minute. I know they see something. I can see it in this little bitty picture in the corner. I know they see it. So <laughs> we're back now. So, but um, but back to your question, brother. It um, I think Davis, you know, with the new environment, the new team, his son got a new girlfriend, his wife got a new boyfriend or ex-wife. Yeah. You know, now it's it's like, <laughs> you know, it's like the mother whose children are growing up and they're leaving the mess. She's like, now what do I do? You know, Davis is like, man, you know, my team is being broken up. I'm, um, so I think that the future is going to be um, for Davis as far as him being a father. He's going to see uh, uh, his son growing up to be a man. Right. You know, mm. And I think part of that, I, I, in my head, in that world, Davis is going to see in his son the man that he should have been to Charlie. That'd be dope. I think that Charlie and Remy are still going to bump heads, and I think that it's going to be something because of me. Oh, yeah. Um, you, yeah, she go, she go, you're going to get her back. 
You gonna get a baby? Oh man, no. get that. Uh-uh. Look, no, you the, no. You the, you the, you the, you the baby daddy. Not. You the Absolutely baby daddy. Not. You always got first. You can't proclaim that, uh-uh. man. I'm telling you right no, now. He needs to move He's spe- on. Speculation. Hush, speculation. Charlie's heart. Hush, no. hush, KD. Mm-hmm. See, that's what <laughs> you and your women. If it, sir, you got this uh, this KD card that uh, that she's uh, she's a big fan, but she has been yeah. mad at you ever since that video came out. <laughs> well, you know, I, I you know I and I don't I don't blame her. You know, especially with. You know what Davis said. You know he only did it one time, and you get busted in the room. And this chick got a, a recording of you on the phone. Yeah, set up. You've been, yeah. been messing with this chick for three years. You know that. You know that that hurts. You know it's not that she's angry. And Charlie was crushed by that. But I, I also think that there's going to be some conflict at some point between Davis and Remy. Right. Um, I don't know if it's going to get physical, but you know, as you can see, you know, Remy really don't really care for Davis. Right. I saw. I saw those looks. Yeah, but Davis is jealous. Oh, absolutely. You, you can see that. And he's hurt. He's like, man. And you know, he should like, be. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's, he's not. Davis is not. Again, this is a maturation period that's been forced on him, but he is not used to feeling this way. Right. He is the man to be humbled and embarrassed and to be embarrassed and to be shot down, to say that this bad sister that you brought that's famous don't even compare to you. She ain't no big deal. Mm-hmm. This dude down here who ain't got millions and who ain't been on billboards and, that, and had endorsements he is a big deal and you not no more. His ego took a serious punch straight to the jaw, man. Right. And he he's not looking, you know, he's not used to that. And so now he has to navigate in a world that's similar to his, in different surroundings with a different outlook on things and a different level of humility that he is still going to have to, you know, he's going to have to grow into that. Right. You know? So I looked on your IMDb and you got some future projects uh, coming up. You care to talk about those? Um, You know, some that I've done a while ago, some titles changed. I saw some things, but I, I think it's something that I worked on a while ago. You know, sometimes it takes a little while for things to come out. Absolutely. You don't have to budget and resources. So uh, someone else just told me that, and I don't really know which one it is. Uh, we got, I see Professor Mack, where Professor you play Mack. Lawrence, outlaw executive producer, Sex and Violence, yes. a brief review of Simple Physics. You play Scotty, and I believe uh, Boxing Day, a day after Christmas, and you play Richie. Right, and then there was another one, but Sex and Violence, somebody that, they changed the title on me, and I don't know which one did it. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm like, man, we changed the title because I don't remember that being the title. But um, you got this. Yeah, you know, these are some independent projects that I worked on with some uh, some people that I've known in the industry for a while. And you know, I, I, I tell certain people who are serious about it, you know, who conduct themselves in a professional um, and an understanding manner, meaning you know, my time um, is precious, and you know, so just let's work in a professional manner. Um, when there's people like that, you know, if I can lend my talent and my face and my name to a project and it's good, you know, why not? I, I feel that we should all, you know, kind of, you know, help each other out. You ever see those movies where it ain't where it's folks that don't look like us, right? But they constantly using the same people, right, 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 <laughs> yeah, right. over and over again. We just did three movies and we got the same <laughs> cast in them three movies. You know, y'all know, probably know what I'm talking about. So, I mean, with that, you know, I like I like to be able to do that. And there's some very talented people. So, man, you can get, get uh, be ready to see me as more independent projects. So I'm probably one of my own because I'm starting to you know, kind of dig in a little bit and understand how this stuff works. Because right. you know, before Queen Sugar, I was still going through some real life issues. Mm-hmm. And then this came and, you know, now I have something else. I'm kind of like Davis West in that regard. You know, the mindset that I had, I had to shed that because I was very despondent and very, I was in a really dark place for a while. And then Ava DuVernay and the company called my agent and 24 hours later, I was in L.A. Right on. Literally filling out a job application on this computer that I'm talking to you on at the leasing office in the uh, business department of the leasing office. Cause I didn't even have Wi-Fi. I was like, I'm not going to be having Wi-Fi. I got unlimited data on my phone, whatever. <laughs> and, um, I was applying for a job mm-hmm. and it, my information wouldn't go through. And, uh, I just got, I was just broken down and I just pushed my computer back and I was like, you know what, God, I'm tired. You know, and I'm not the most religious cat in the world. I'm really not. But I believe in a greater source that, you know, when it, that we reverberate with, mm-hmm. you know, you can look at each other in that studio and see if somebody thinks something is funny or disgusting or sad. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. You don't have to say anything. There's a frequency that we pick up and we get on that. Dig it. And I think something, it, it hurt me, he, she, whatever. I would like to thank God as a black woman, but that's just me. <laughs> but right on. Some, it, it just it just felt something. And right there, I put this on my mom, man, you know, when she rest in peace. My phone had just finished updating and I had a, a voicemail that was almost two minutes long. From that point, 24 hours later, I was in the room with Ava DuVernay. Wow. Yeah. And it's, it's so... Life you know, changing. Real quick, sir, because I know you're running uh, we over on time, but I got uh, just a few more questions for you. But I also need a, I also need a favor. Oh, God. Here we go. I want to tell him something. I know um, you're going to get to okay, tell him. Okay, okay. Let me handle. <laughs> see, what I see, we fighting over you now, sir. Yeah. <laughs> Two women in here. <laughs> so Whatever. If you, wouldn't, if, if you wouldn't mind, sir, <clears throat> if you could just look into the camera, say your name, mm-hmm. and tell people that they're tuned in to the Bonamber Show. Okay. Hello, everyone. My name is Tim Kyle Durrett. You may know me as Davis West on Queen Sugar, and you're watching the Benet Embry Show. Thank you, sir. See, I, I got to have a sound bite, <laughs> and, and, and that helps his ego too. No, that doesn't help. The, that doesn't help the ego. Can I, can I talk to him for a second? Yes, yes, we can okay. talk for a second. Oh, let me see. Oh, just a FYI, when you get ready to do your projects, you have two actors here. You oh, got yes, myself you and you got KD Carr. Yes. Now, I only got three IMDb, uh, IMDb credits, but they strong IMDb credits, sir. <laughs> that's they, right. They, yeah, they, you got to start somewhere, man. <laughs> so, go ahead, KD. What I wanted to say, um, I went to ABFF, American Black Film Festival, uh, this past June. And, of course, I was there in attendance when they showed um, first episode of season two. And you uh-huh. told basically kind of the same story that you just told about how, you know, you were in Hollywood and everything was kind of down for you before you got this phone call. So I just wanted to tell you that was so inspiring. And what you said to, I don't know if they paid you guys, because every one of y'all said praised women. I was like, God dang, where did they (laughs) find these men from? Y'all were, y'all seemed like y'all really tight knit, but your, your speech was inspirational to me. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. I mean, you know, we, I, I think that Ava DuVernay, she, she'll she say it, and she's been quoted. She doesn't just cast for talent. She casts for spirit. Wow. And That's dope. You can see that, that that everybody is just, I mean, when you see the the, the behind-the-scenes stuff and, and, and we're laughing and joking, we hang out all the time when we have the time, if, you know, if our schedule's allowed. But it's it that's real. And, you know, it's, it's rare in this industry. But I think that you have someone that said, you know what? I'm going to do it with, I'm going to take Ava DuVernay, what she did, she took business and she took personality and spirit and the feeling and got those and found people that are really, because, you know, I'm, I pride myself on being punctual and professional and I love, I love what I do. So I think that that's what you saw on that stage is that everybody there was just being themselves because we've been chosen for that and have been allowed to do that and be that both on and off camera. And uh, so we're able to, there's an honesty that comes with that without being afraid. You know, I, t- I shout out to my sisters all the time. Some of them play me shade. Oh, he don't know nothing. He likes skin. That's cool. <laughs> hey, I feel your pain, bro. I feel your pain. I feel hey, your pain. Hey, I know you know, what it's like. I, say, I, might be, uh, I might be the color of an uncooked waffle, but inside I'm black as a thousand midnights. My heart comes from my folks. So right on. You can say what you want. But I appreciate right. it, in the air. Liking what I had to say. You know, it's just coming from my, from my heart, you know. Well, sir, real quick, thank you so much for your time. Yes. We have greatly appreciate it. I feel like um, the next time that you do a speech or a seminar, I definitely would like to be there because I like the way you talk with such passion and such grace that, and it's really, uh, you know, I would love to, I'm a person that loves to uh, absorb uh, wisdom. So yeah. anything that. Me too, so brother. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sure. So tell people how to get in contact with you, sir. Um, you know, I'm on, I'm not on Facebook a lot. I need to get better with that because it's just gotten so convoluted, but that's Tim and Kyle Durrett. And I promise everybody, whoever listening, tell everybody, you know, I'm, I, there might be messages in there that I just can't get to because I get hit up and every, it, it, emails, text messages, right. letters, uh, deliveries, <laughs> meetings, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, WhatsApp, all these different people. I'm talking to people all over the world all times of the day, and I'm still trying to get my bearings back. I've been home two and a half months, and it feels like I've been back for six. So just bear with me. Right on. On Instagram, I'm at Tim and K. Durrett, and at uh, uh, Twitter, I'm at Tim and K. Durrett. And again, Facebook is Tim and Kyle Durrett, my full name. So I can right. reach out to me, and I promise I'll get back to everybody as soon as I can. 
All right, now. Thank when you, you. When you win your Oscar and we call you back for a follow-up yes. interview. Yes. Let's not be acting funny now, like you don't got too too big for that no. old Bene Embry yeah, show. We're gonna do it while I'm there, so we can look at each other. That's why I was so long winded tonight. I'm talking to this little dot right here. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, next time you're in Dallas, you're more than welcome to come up to the studio. We would love to have you. Well, I got some folks in Dallas, so well, you know, well, when well, I get up there, you know, see what's cracking. Yeah, just F like, FYI, Dallas has talent. Yeah, Dallas. There's a lot of talent here Absolutely. in Dallas. There's a lot of talent in Dallas. Because you said you you were doing an independent project. Yeah. Well, just this, let me just clarify something. Just because you're from Dallas, you can be from Nebraska. Talent is talent, man. You Dig know, true. Talent is born all over the place. So Absolutely. If you're in Dallas and you don't live in New York or LA or Chicago or in Atlanta, you know you got to get to where the work is. But talent, absolutely, talent, talent is global, man. Don't 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 feel like you ain't talented enough because you ain't from a big. I'm from Chicago and I live in LA. Right on. You know I ain't from here. I live here, but you know, you know, Common is from Chicago, but he live out here. It's a lot of folks all over, man. Don't get it twisted. Don't limit yourself by where you're from. Right on. If you want to do the work, you just go there and and do that, and then build your own crib where you at if you want to make that money. All right, all right. Thank you, well, sir. Once again, thank you so much. We'll be yes. looking forward to hearing from you again soon. Whenever you're in town, please feel free to stop by, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, all the way from Chicago, 34 acting credits to his name. Inspirational. Yeah. The wise. <laughs> Tim and Kyle Direct. Yes. Thank you, sir. Thank you guys so much. I Thank appreciate you. it. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Wow. Now, how I work this thing, how I hang up on you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I engineer click you off. Don't worry about it. Have a good night. Y'all be cool. All right. All right. Peace.